Okay, hey everybody, uh, this is TMC um, and um, Hype Nutrition is finally in their warehouse with the podcast set up. Yes, this sir. is Esma Salinas and Kyle Novak. And uh, we're ready to bring you episode, what is it, four now? Yeah, I think episode four. All right, uh, as you can tell, we finally got into the new warehouse, guys. Uh, not only did we get into the new warehouse and just move all the um, equipment over from the old office, but we have sanded this table down. <laughs> we, so, no, we, have, we haven't sanded it. But we've, we've stained this table, and we're finally looking a little more spacious. Um, we also have our desks in here finally. we got a nice couch. Um, everything is set up to kind of like a big dream that we've been having, uh, how we thought it out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's set up for success. I feel like, um, you know, when we had this conversation probably about a month ago, I think, mm -hmm. is when we kind of dabbled into the thought of, you know, securing the spot. And, you know, we talked about it a lot, and it's a, it's a big commitment. It's a huge commitment for us, you know, not only um, being in here every day, but financially as well. That's a, you know, when you commit to a thousand square foot warehouse, that's not something small. So it's, but, you know, once we're in here, dude, we've been in, like what we've been here every single day you know since you know we were we recovered from a sickness and ever since then we've been here i think eight to ten hours each day it's, it's yeah awesome. and the, the great thing about this place is it's not only like a, a, a what's it called a stepping stone to, of like oh look we got a warehouse it's not about that per se it's more about the compound interest of every single day right it's almost like the days that we're working at home and we're at home doing things, not only are we not collaborating as well as we could be when we are in office, yeah. but we also have everything at our fingertips here without in any way, like, um, what is it uh, called? Um, kind of messing up our daily routine with everything else we have going on. Um, another great thing that I love about this warehouse is just getting away from the house and working from home all the time. Um, it's really nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of agreed in to like, that's why we had the office in uh, downtown Houston. When I got it in October of 2020, I couldn't stand being home. I'm a big, like my surroundings, like if I'm in a different place, like that's why I love coffee shops too, because if someone else, like if you're working right beside me, I'm therefore going to work as well. It kind of motivates me. So just right. being in a different atmosphere, knowing this is our spot. And it, I kind of treat it like a nine to five. Like, you know, right. I get back or I get up in the mornings, you know, I have my breakfast or if we do a workout and then I'm here from I clock in at, you know, nine o'clock. And then we're here obviously a little bit later sometimes, sometimes a little bit shorter, just depending on mm -hmm. what we have going on. But, you know, once we're in here, it seems like we're already committed to what our task is versus, you know, two or three months ago, it would be a thing of, oh, hey, we need to get this done. But. Uh, I'm in my apartment right now, you know, where there's a distraction that would keep us from there. But now since we're both here, do we've gotten more done in seven days. And I think we have honestly in, mm -hmm. in months. So it's like you said, that compound interest is exciting to see. And this week, I'm excited to see what two months does, three months does. Imagine in a year or so. Yeah. Uh, a few points on what you said is one, what you were saying, we come in here nine to five. And what's important about that, at least from what I've learned from some of the readings that I've done in my past, is like one example, and someone who says a lot about this, they, they talk highly about Eminem. And they say, like, this music doesn't represent the kind of business he does. Like, no matter what, Eminem was going in the office nine to five. And whether he had the motivation, whether he had the creativity, it didn't matter because it's just like compound interest. It's just like investing every day in the market it's not about winning some days it's about the the the, the, to, the totality of all days combined no matter what happens if you're always investing you're going to have a net positive yeah um and um another thing that we have been talking about is compound interest and one book that talks a lot about is atomic habits and i mean literally everything that he talks about is about how habits are the compound interest of self-improvement mm -hmm. like that's that's seriously what it is like all those moments that we have when we're fighting with some kind of demon or some kind of obstacle it's literally you're fighting with these habits because you're either growing or you're declining each day 
Yeah. And that's the fight with that habit that we are constantly having. Yeah. Uh, I heard a quote that said, it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. And if you think about that, you know, with the new year coming up, you know, it's January of 2022. We have all our big aspirations. This is our year. 22 or 2022. We've hear it every single year. 2021 was our year. 2020. And, um, you know, we start out with these, and it goes back to the habits, right? We go all in on this crazy goal, whatever it is we have. It could be getting back into the gym. It could be starting a new diet. And then we go clean for like two or three days. We're great. And then it just falls apart. And uh, if we start, and I'm not sure if it talks about it in the book, kind of be uh, curious to see if it did. But uh, I've even read in a book about, a ha- or about habits that if you kind of start small, and get little increments and then grow from that foundation or build the foundation with those habits, then it kind of grows. It's like, you know, for us going to the gym, when we started four or five years ago, it was kind of a chore. Like, all right, if Mm -hmm. I have time, it's just like, uh, I don't really want to go some days, but now it's like, we're excited. We don't have to think about it. We just get up, we get our gym bag and we go. So I'm not sure. Did it talk about like, you know, little things that compound, like you said, the compound interest. So, what you're saying is a mindset shift where you're not thinking about things like, ah, I got to do this or I got to do that. Kind of like how when we were working from home, it was a lot of that, like, hey, we need to do this. Hey, we need to do that. Um, but now we're at the point where we get to do these things. We get to add more to our company. We get to add more to our warehouse. We get to add more to our our reputation in Houston like it, it's a change of mindset like an example of this was uh, Monday we had the national championship going on and we both love sports we love sports so much but instead of like we had the game on but we weren't even paying attention to the game I was mm-hmm. I was painting a chalkboard on the wall that obviously still doesn't work um, it is so, still so, it's still in the works so after the where- seven days <laughs> the warehouse is made out of cinder blocks right like that is the foundation of the walls so in order to get it to be smooth, I had to put a primer on it. Well, the primer wasn't enough, but then I put chalk paint on it just to give it a try. And man, I literally went through a full piece of chalk <laughs> just to write to do list. So it's like I, that episode of SpongeBob <laughs> where it's like five minutes and it's just all he writes is. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was trying to say is um, just the example of n- not even caring about watching football in that moment just to. I was getting a chalkboard done on the wall. He was doing some work for on a TikTok or something. And it's just funny how how invested we are in these things. We're at, like our, our mind has completely changed. Like, yes, we get to wake up and we get to go into a warehouse and do something for our company, you know? Yeah, and I think it kind of ties back into something we want to talk about was in today's world, there's so many distractions. And, you know, like you said, you know, we had the game on and everything, but we were being still intentional with our time. Sometimes, you know, people say, oh, I worked 10, 12 hours that mm-hmm. day. But how much time did you really work? Did you, were you on your phone for four or five hours? Did you look at, you know, your screen time? Like it shows you the statistics. How much time were you on social media? How much time were you on, you know, the website we're browsing on YouTube? So, you know, sometimes it'd be better to do four to five hours of intentional work is equivalent to 15 hours of, you know, just kind of dabbling into something. So, and I know that's a huge thing where it comes to accomplishing goals because, you know, they said, you know, I worked so hard, but did you really, were you really intentional with what you were doing? Mm -hmm. So that's always a, that's a huge thing for me because, you know, you get scrolling on TikTok, you get scrolling on Instagram. It's the infinite scroll. They do it on purpose. It's easily to get, or it's easy to get distracted, and then you get addicted to it. And um, so I think it's important, you know, the day before, you know, you start your day, you write out, and I know Andy Frizzella has his like critical task list or something that is important to you to get get excited about the next day, and say, hey, until I finish one through five or one through six, I am not going to do anything else besides that until or I can't get on social media I can't get you know talk to whoever until I get these things done because that is how I win the day and if you can't win the day then you can't you can't get consistent Mm -hmm. um yeah Andy he's he's honestly always he's made a big impact in my life um what he is uh, because I assume some people may not know what kind of podcast he has 
Um, but his story is pretty interesting. I think Kyle can probably say it a little better than I can. But for the gist of it, it's um, this man went all in. He said, I'm going to be successful in this nutrition company. And and he literally had, was sleeping in the back room and living his life inside a, I believe, a nutrition store, right? Is that yeah, about yeah, right? Yeah, his own like, first like, retail and shop. And now... Ten years later, he has no sympathy for anybody who makes excuses on how to be successful, which is hard for some people. Some people don't like that kind of teachings, and that's fine. Um, but it resonates a lot with us as a team. Um, we both come from sport backgrounds, so we kind of enjoy those kind of demeanors when it, or that kind of demeanor whenever it comes to uh, idolizing someone and, and learning and gleaning off of them. Um, one thing that he doesn't really talk about so often, but I, I see from him is it's not about setting the goals, right? It's, it's more about bettering your system, right? It's like, it's not about, do I want to wake up and do this? It's today we're going into the warehouse eight hours, right? And there's no questions about it. There's no ifs, ands, nothing about it. It's, we're going to go in eight hours. And what happens when you are in the warehouse for eight hours? You see the list of items we need to accomplish. You see all the creativity. You know, you, it spurs all the kinds of creativity just because we get excited over things that we see. Um, and just the compound interest of eight hours a day comparatively to maybe 12 hours every seven days or something, yeah. completely different. Um, so all I'm saying is don't focus on those goals, guys. Focus on the system. Whether you have a company or whether you're just working on yourself, self-improvement is a company. Self-improvement is a temple. Self-improvement is, you know, even more difficult than running a business. So just focus on your system, and, man, everything follows suit. And that's uh, in finding those systems. I think of self-improvement as a, as a car. You're always fine-tuning to make – or as, like, a race car. You're fine-tuning – your systems and uh, like how the engine works or whatever you need to do to the car, make adjustments to make it work as fluid as possible. And, uh, and you're going to have mistakes within that time. We have mistakes, you know, every single week of, you know, I didn't do something what I should have done, but it's always fine. It's being aware of what you didn't do and correcting it and trying your best to implement a system to say, Hey, this is what I think can fix it. And, uh, and it's tough. It's never easy because, you know, with the world of distractions, you know, and sometimes it gets away from you. But really just having, you know, something that really, uh, to me, just I know we always talk about like motivation, discipline, and then the diligence part of it. I know we had like a whole podcast on it. But um, I don't know, to me, I always like have such a better day. If uh, I always go back to the Matthew McConaughey thing of like the coffee and the Keurig, like, quote, do that. To me, it's it's a small thing, but I started doing it like, like I don't know if you remember like when you're a kid in school, like you laid out your clothes like the first day of school. Mm -hmm. You got your fit ready. You had your new Nikes on. You had the the Nike shocks uh, back in like fifth grade. But you're ready. Like you usually had. It's so weird. You had like the best day of the year um, because you had your things laid out for you. And if you do those things, like to me, that's what usually sets me up for success. Is having everything the intent of the next day down um, even before it starts because it's with anything preparation leads to success so um, and yeah, that is what he's explaining is like it's it's great it really does phenomenal things but that is one habit right yeah. one small habit that can change a lot other a lot of other habits um, and an example is he's not gonna run late anywhere mm -hmm. Right. He doesn't need much time to get ready. He doesn't need much time because he already prepared. Right. Yeah. Um, so one thing that is interesting about that is some people and even me, I'm a huge victim of this constantly is when I start focusing specifically on my habits and me wanting to better a certain habit, I actually feel like I do worse. I feel like what we really should aspire to do is focus on what we want to become, right? Like an example is right now we are who we are and, and a lot of people understand who we are. But like if we were like, I want to be Joe Rogan the next day, that is great. That's a great like super aspirational goal. But the problem is, is that the kind of things you have to do in order to get where he is with his platform is, is so overwhelming. 
So you have to learn how to like, not only you want that kind of goal, but you want to focus more on a more uh, um, compromised aspiration because it's like, it's almost like when you focus on one lap at a time, rather than I'm going to win this race, you focus on doing each lap so much better. It's like how Will Smith constantly preaches about, I'm going to, I don't say I'm going to build a wall. I say I'm going to lay each one of these bricks so well and with so much intention that soon enough the system is going to create a wall, right? So all I say is when you focus on the system and who you can become rather than the actual habits, you will be way more effective in achieving what you want to achieve. Again, this is a battle we all have where we're not doing it at times, right? Um, but it's a spectrum. You get better at it and better at it. You never get perfect, but you get better at it. And it's how can you sustain uh, a better balance that, that helps you out more, right? That is more effective for you and your, your goals. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of in, in that process, you find out who you're not as mm -hmm. well. And sometimes you have a, a perfect vision of who you want to be, and that's not who you truly are. Like once you do all the things that you think, you're like, okay, this really isn't me. I, I, it's a weird conversation to have because like you think you know who you are. Like think about it as a kid, like what you wanted to become. Is that exactly what you are now? And all the different <laughs> goals. Like I know what I wanted to be, and in my mind, I was going to be six three, two twenty five, and be in the MLB. And real, I, real quick, I, I have this poster, or in my yearbook, like first grade, I was going to be an astronaut, dentist, um, I forgot what else, uh, football player. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, anyways, continue. <laughs> no, it's just. Uh, hey, and where, where are we at now? Yeah. <laughs> we got a nutrition business. Check, check, check. Yeah, I didn't even know what pre-workout was until I was like 18. So, um, <laughs> And I just keep relating everything back to the business and like who I want to become. And like I know who you want to become and who what, or what we want to become. We want to build a community. And I think that's why we're doing so much content. And we kind of did the, the fit. I call it the FitFo, the figure it the out. I know we can't cuss on YouTube, but... Um, you know, there's just times where you kind of have to go, I say all in and I'm going to keep preaching it for, for a long time. Cause, um, it's worked out for me every time I've done it, you know, going yeah. all in on something, you just kind of get on a, a rough road. And sometimes there's a lot of bumps in that road, but you figure it out, you tune the car and you keep going. And so I think that's what we're figuring out with this business. We had a long conversation last night about, some of the biggest decisions or decisions we're about, it's going to change the whole course of our mm -hmm. trajectory in the next year. So, and sometimes it, there's going to be tough moments in there where you're going to question everything that you're doing and like, is it worth it? Or all these tough times or all these things or all these times that I don't want to do something, I'm going to do it anyways. Is it worth it? And I believe so. I, I think so. Yes. Because that's how you become a better person. That's how you become a better version of yourself is through those tough times. Mm -hmm. Build the calluses. Build the calluses of your mind, you know. Oh, dude, that is dirty. <laughs> that is nasty. Huh? Dude, we deadlifted what? today. I thought mine was dirty. Um, Why so, is it black? Oh, today, I don't – that's what I'm saying. The grip was so bad oh, okay. today on deadlift. Yeah, uh, I don't think we, we said we just came from a workout like 30 minutes ago. So. Yeah, and it was the worst experience because, I mean, I did fine. I did really well, actually. I actually enjoyed my performance, but – uh, we work. We basically deadlifted pretty heavy on a three by three, uh, with um, a really bad gnarling bar, and it was a stiff bar, so really bad. But I did pick up some heavy weight, um, so that was good. Um, but yeah, um, I was gonna wrap some of that stuff together. Inside of Atomic Habits, they mentioned one thing, and you said this earlier. You were talking about laying your clothes out, and they basically say there's four laws of behavior change. And one of them was make it obvious. And putting that Keurig cup already in the Keurig, putting your clothes out, putting your toothbrush out, and all that stuff that lines up so you can get out of the door, that is making it obvious. Um, and I'm going to go through the last three. And the second one was make it attractive. An example of this is if you're trying to eat healthy, maybe don't make chicken and rice. Maybe make something more nutritious. Maybe make... Uh, like kale noodle, you know, pasta with chicken, you know, something more attractive and more interesting. So you make it attractive. 
The third one is make it easy. How do you make it easier? Well, look, if I know I hate going to the grocery store, how do I make it easy? Well, let me just order the groceries. It might be a little more expensive, but hey, it's a thousand times more expensive to go order food constantly. And it's a lot worse for you and your nutrition, your body, right? And then the fourth one is make it satisfying. There's something to a mental connection between doing something and saying, oh, I hate doing this and I get to do this. I get to eat healthy. I get to take care of my body. I get to treat myself like a temple and I get to make it the best temple possible, right? All those mind changes, like it may sound, it may be very um, disingenuous at times, but after a few times of you saying it, man, it becomes you. It becomes who you are. And that's like, I feel like the best way to actually achieve anything is picture yourself ideally as someone else, right? Like, I want to be an athlete. So if I say that every day, I must also act like an athlete. I ask myself, is eating this donut what an athlete would do? No, right? Those little mindset changes changes everything. Yeah, and that's just asking yourself, having those conversations, we get wrapped up in, you know, the 40 different other things that we have going on. And But who do you want to become? Like you said earlier, I think we get – in. Me personally, I get wrapped up with everything I have going on and I only have those conversations with myself. Am I really on the trajectory of where I actually want to go? Is this who I want to be? So just take a step back, you know, once a week, have some time. And we talked about this earlier is you need your alone time to like really think about those kinds of things. Cause if not, you'll just go and you'll go through the motions and going through the motions really get you nowhere. And um, you know, I kind of want to take a, sorry, if you also hear a, a few, um, bone ch or, you know, sounds of bones, we got a, our doggos underneath our desk that are <laughs> decided to go ham right in the middle of our podcast. But, uh, you know, I know we had a great conversation and we also are not going to make the mistake of going over 30 minutes because of our cam camera, um, logistics, but, you know, I just wanted to ask you a question, you know, where do you see our business in, in six months and a year, you know? So one thing that I'm realizing is in order to propel a business like this forward, it's not about just hustling. It's not about working hard um, because those things are innate. You need them, right? But I don't think that is the most important part. I think the most important part is – is content, is t is having more views, um, and, and and almost being genuinely who you are, so that people that do resonate with who you are as a person will basically want to hear more and more about it. And the reason it's important is to be yourself is because you cannot sustain a facade of who you think you are. You can't. Uh, I I struggle with that all the time, and I I mean I one thing I love about this warehouse is I'm constantly myself because we have the space to our, our own sanctuary to just be ourselves. Um, so I know that our actions at the very moment this last week has been just amazing. We have been crushing it. Our numbers, our velocity of our numbers have been crazy right now, which that's something we don't have to worry about. But not only currency, but also like our social media numbers have been moving and which is great. Um, in six months, I truly see us making a pretty serious decision. Um, we're at a fork right now where we could, we could either try to juggle multiple things at once and grow like a year, a year and a half slower than what we could potentially be doing, or we could expediate this process by doing a specific thing and um yeah I, I i see so much potential in this business and as soon as that wave of momentum happens in social media like that's it it's like it's it's a rule as long as we keep coming into the warehouse it's gone we're, we're there and and we're gonna see things move like crazy so the only thing that i worry about in six months is that our logistics won't be in place yeah yeah and, um, and to follow that, I mean, what do you see us in six months, right? You know, obviously there's 40 different things that I want to see happen with this business. And uh, sorry, a big point when I was listening to you is, you know, with the social media, with our content is a big part is being vulnerable. 
Uh, you hear a lot of like influencers or people on podcasts talking about being vulnerable. And like he said, being a facade of what you really are and not even on camera, but just putting on a, a mask every day, that's, that's tough in itself. You get burnt out very quickly. And so I've realized even on this podcast, like right now, I enjoy kind of just listening to you. I feel like I learn a lot from what you have to say. And then I like also asking questions because I feel like I don't want to speak on a topic that I necessarily don't have facts or actually have a valid input. And I think that's okay. I think that needs to happen more in, in society, by the way. If you don't feel comfortable talking about a certain different thing, it's okay not to know. And uh, I know this doesn't go back to our business, but I just kind of wanted to make that point is, you know, I'm still learning, you know, being comfortable on camera. I've been behind the camera for, what, six years now. So being in front of it is definitely a, a switch up. And, you know, I love to talk. I love to meet people. And so, you know, personally, I, I know this is going to be asked about the business, but that's something I want to uh, just be comfortable with is not always knowing because that just takes a huge weight off my shoulders. Sometimes I just it's OK to learn. So. But for the business, man, like, I just really want, like, what I love right now is we're not worried about sales, but when we do get an order, it's everything to us. And I can't wait to wake up the day where we're getting multiple notifications and, and looking at every single one and getting to write a hundred, you know, thank you notes a day. Mm -hmm. And that's what I just look so forward to and, and getting to talk to more people about, their goals and their aspirations to say, hey, we had a little bit of part of, of helping them because, hey, we watched a podcast uh, or, you know, TMC podcast or they, we watched a YouTube video or, help, hey, we helped out just a little bit. The helping people is the best part I found in, you know, doing the videography business and now with hype. And so um, I know we got to uh, wrap it up here. But I just want to look back on these different things and just say, hey, we're growing. We're growing and I hope you guys can uh, you know grow with us but you know that just uh, kind of wraps up about um our episode four you know we have a this should be coming out here in the next couple days and then we'll also have our youtube coming up with our powerlifting journey and then just updates on the business in general get a lot more behind the scenes stuff hopefully estevan's chalk wall will <laughs> we don't know when it'll get done. I ain't gonna lie but, to you. <laughs> but um, so one thing we want to really echo, and that is, if you learn anything, if you felt anything here was of value, if you in any way were entertained, um, give us a like, get subscribe, uh, join the community. Um, all this is free. Um, we just would love if you could um, kind of pay back, you know, what we are trying to do here. Um, it would help it would help us greatly and we would appreciate that so much go ahead Kyle break us out yeah and um, yeah that's just our currency that's our currency on how we grow that's how we it's all organic right now we're not doing any paid promotions and I know we only have a minute and a half left so um, yeah I think this is a weekly podcast and you know next time hopefully we have a guest we have some guests coming up we have a lot more space and we have a lot more opportunities to uh, meet a lot of different great people in Houston. So with that being said, my name is Kyle Novak. Esteban Salinas. And this is the Marathon Continues Podcast.